Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James, where I do what I want, when I want, and today I want to get into the astrology side of my channel, more specifically my in-depth rising sign series, and today we're going to get into Pisces rising. Now before we get into it, let me explain why the rising sign is so important in the chart and just in general. You know, when I'm out having fun with friends or I'm meeting new people or I'm reading a birth chart, um, I don't really care about the sun or the moon or any Venus. I care about the rising sign because the rising sign is going to show and tell me how you grew up. It's going to show me, you know, um, who your mother was. It's going to show me how you make your money. It's going to show me the business partnerships and the marriages that you're going to attract and the vocation that you're going to end up in and fall into. And so if you would like to hear about the unique way in which Pisces rising will attract and these things will manifest, let's get into it. Yeah. So with Pisces in the first sign, this is going to mean that you are going to be ruled by Neptune and Jupiter. You're going to have Neptune and Jupiter in your first house. And this is going to mean that for you, you are going to be a very dreamy, abstract figure to people. People are not going to really know who you are or what you're thinking. And the way you look is going to be very ethereal. It's almost going to be magical. You're going to have a kind of a veil over you in the sense that like people put their fantasies on you, you know, and you're probably going to be someone that goes with the flow or takes on the energies and the attitudes and the traits and the life of other people. And that's why other people don't know you because you're very mutable. You're going to be a very um, easygoing, ethereal, dreamy like energy in your appearance and the way you present. And you could be the most opinionated, strongest, person ever right with like the most unique personality and people will still put their what they believe on you on you if that makes sense like whatever they believe you to be is what you're gonna almost like mold and mesh into and what people are gonna want to put on you you're not gonna really you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be different things to different people with the illusionary Neptune in your first house. People, if, so if you ask this person who they think you are versus that person, they're gonna have a different idea of who they think you are because who you are is gonna be based on the imagination of others. So you can use that to your advantage or it can be a, it can be a gift and a curse for a lot of you, you know? Um, now with Aries in your second house, Aries in your second house is gonna mean that for you, money is the goal, you know? Um, what money and materialism is the goal for you and you want nice things you love nice things who doesn't love nice things but for you you're gonna be very action oriented when it comes to going after those things you know you're gonna be very like independent I think that independence is a very big thing for you and you're going to want to strive to do things on your own and have your own resources and have your own like um, things you're gonna be a very independent individualistic person and you're gonna be action oriented to get money you probably get money quick and lose money quick and your businesses and how you make money is also gonna be in that as well you're gonna have to be very very action oriented when it comes to getting your money you can't just like sit back and dream and hope even though you'd like to but it's gonna require you an effort to get money and it's gonna require you like battling as well or competing as well in some shape or form now with third house in Taurus this is going to mean that you have Venus in your third house so again how you think and how you communicate is going to be colored by Venus so again how if you could be the most opinionated person on the planet but with people you don't know or love partners or business partnerships or the people who aren't your immediate family you're going to take the route of easy going the, the path of least resistance you know you'll really you'll be someone that goes with the flow or is just very like stable and dependable but you're not going to really rock the boat when it comes to your speech and how you think and the opinions that you convey you're going to be someone that just goes with the flow and you're going to be also pe someone that people come to to depend on and who is always very even keel with your mind you're not going to have very ups and downs as far as like you know how some people have a lot of mood swings or a lot of things like that? You're not gonna have that a lot. You're gonna be very even keel with your personality and, and the way you communicate. The way you communicate and the way you delegate is gonna be very diplomatic and very um, graceful. People are never gonna be like, ugh, like, oh my God, this person said that, or you're gonna be very like diplomatic. Um, 
So with four, fourth house in Gemini is gonna mean that you grew up with a mother who's probably very social or very active in, in and also required you to be very uh, talkative within your, um, within your household. You probably had a lot of siblings and you probably were someone that if you didn't, if you didn't speak up, you didn't get fed. It, it almost goes back to that story of like, closed mouths don't get fed, right? Like it was very that. You probably also, um, I feel like that covers it actually, yeah. So that's fourth house in Gemini. Now with fifth house in Cancer, you are going to love partners who emotionally fulfill you. If they do not emotionally fulfill you or are not emotionally deep or support you in some way, shape or form, you're not gonna really like them. And those are not the partners that you like. You like partners who feel like home to you or feel very nurturing and healing to you or kind of like a mother, father type figure towards you. Someone who like, you know, could be your big spoon, so to speak. Like you really love nurturing figures who can make you feel safe and supported, whether that be emotionally, monetarily, Physically, you love support in your relationships and especially your dating relationships. Um, now with Leo in your sixth house, this is gonna mean that when it comes to the career and the service and the that you give in the world and your day-to-day -day routines, it's gonna require you to be very expressive, very bold, very out there, to be very creative and um, bring something to the table, you know, as far as like your creativity or your shine. It's gonna require you to shine on your day to day. So um, I, I believe Whitney Houston had this, it was a Pisces rising and she in her day to day service had to be what? A singer. She had to get up and singing and being in front of people was her thing. And so you're gonna have themes of that where when you're a Pisces rising, whether you are a personal trainer or um, a motivational speaker or an artist or something, what you do in your day to day puts you in the limelight in some shape or form um, in a creative sense. Now, with seventh house in Virgo, remember, Virgo is your seventh house and it is the business partnerships and it is the marriage partner that you attract. And this goes back to the fifth house of what I said about cancer being that you want someone to support you, right? To help you, to nurture you, to heal you. And with Virgo being your seventh house, the, the partner that you attract is gonna be someone that takes kind of like your chaotic thoughts or your chaos in general and fixes it. And what is that? That's supportive nature, that's supportive energy. And so with Virgo here, you're gonna always find yourself in relationships with people who have have got it going on in the sense they have, they, they have perfected their routines, they have perfected their craft, they have perfected their um, job, their career, or they themselves carry themselves with a very detail-oriented way. And they kind of put that on you as well. They kind of want to take your Piscean dreaminess and ground it and say, no, we wake up at this time, this is what you do to put this in action, this is how you make money. And you love those types of people because there's a sense of security in that. There's a sense of like, you know, on the days that I my head is in the clouds, my Virgoan energy, energy partner will be the one to pick up the pieces or take care of the mess or, so it just gives you more time to be ethereal. It gives you more time to, you know, play and create and just be and just live and, and let the universe take you where it wants to take you. And so you, with this, it, it does speak to that story of like, you're gonna attract a partner and this, okay, so that is how it is when it comes to your, your love and your romance, right? On the other hand, when it comes to your business partnerships, now your business partnerships in Virgo in the seventh house is gonna mean that you are gonna find yourself in careers or in jobs that require you to be very, very data oriented or detail oriented. You're gonna need to be very mental and cerebral and you're gonna need to be very, very, very detail oriented. Someone who is very like meticulous and, and like, on it you there's no room for error it's like it either it's perfect or it's wrong that's that's what your business partnerships the job that you'll find yourself in is that it it, it requires you to literally be like that it's like either it, you're perfect at it or it's wrong there's no room for error so for like you could be like a surgeon or a singer or a data analyst right like think about that each one of those things that i just named requires perfection there's no gray area like when you sing it's either good or bad period when it comes to 
a surgeon, there is no room for error. Either it's hurt done right or it's wrong. Um, a data analyst, same thing. It's either by the book, it's the data, or it's wrong. So, and your, your job is also gonna require you to be of service, give something, heal something, perfect something. So now with eighth house Libra, now with eighth house Libra, this is gonna mean that Venus is ruling your eighth house. And so you're gonna be, this gives me very much sugar baby vibes. This gives me um, someone who is able to cultivate other people's resources and get that very easily. You probably are gonna gain an inheritance from your mother or, or some woman figure within your family um, is gonna pass an inheritance along to you. Um, with Libra in the eighth house, you are gonna seek fairness when it comes to your relationships. Um, it's always tit for tat with you. It's like, if I do this, you do that. If I do this, you do that. You know, um, yeah. So you're also gonna be very analytical as well within, when it comes to your intimate bonds with people. You're gonna be very like airy, like in your mind about it, but it, you're gonna be graceful as well. You're not gonna wanna take too much or do too much too soon. So with Ninth House in Scorpio, this is gonna mean that you are someone who, you know, maybe your, your father was a very transformative figure growing up and this person or your dad was taught you to be very, um, maybe your dad had a lot of power growing up and was very emotional and Traveling for you is a very deep, cathartic thing. It is when you travel, you are someone that transforms by your travels and are transformed when traveling. You come away with a new way of thinking, a new emotional outlook, a new center around things. So, yeah, and, and yeah. Your, your education was probably very intense as well. So, with Sagittarius in the 10th house, it's gonna mean that your job is probably gonna require you to travel, whether it be within the city, you probably go from one part of your company to the other in different parts of the city, or you're a remote person, like your, your job requires freedom, like you are free in your job. So again, this gives me like someone who, if you're a singer, right? For your job, that means that you don't have a set place that you report to. It means that you're on tour and you're touring the world, right? If you are a if you are a remote, if your if your job is remote, that means that you can be anywhere in the world, right? You probably are someone that works remote and you are just you have freedom. You have freedom and travel within your job. It requires both of those things. So now with um, 11th house in Capricorn. Now, when it comes to Capricorn 11th house, this is gonna mean that you have older friends. You have friends that are very successful and that have a way about them that they are very successful and probably they work very hard. The networks that you find yourself in are people who are older than you, probably are a little bit more successful than you and that can teach you things about success and teach you things about hard work and who are, yeah, and, and it could also mean that for you, a, a large network of friends and a large network in a community that you feel um, aligned with are, is not gonna come easy to you. It may come with age and time that you will find that community, but I find that people who have Capricorn and 11th house in an earlier age don't have very many friends. They have probably like two or three solid friends that they have had from birth, but outside of that, everything's kind of restricted. But the friends they do have are very successful. They are quality friends. The friends that they choose have money and they are of quality and they are successful. Those are the, the requirements for, for people with 11th house Capricorn. Now with 12th house in Aquarius, this is gonna mean that your individualistic nature is very hard for you. For you to step outside the box and be inventive and probably do something that shakes people or be very avant-garde, that individualistic nature is kind of cut off to you. And you are also going to be someone that, you know, um, because you are a Pisces rising and you are already on the journey of just letting go and letting life take you, a lot of people are gonna see that as like strange, right? But for you, that is how you connect to the universe. And so, yeah, that was 
that was my Pisces Rising video. If you would like to know the unique placements and um, natal chart readings of your unique placements because everything is different when you put your unique planets in a chart, right? This is what I just told you about like your chart. This was a general, just, you know, plain canvas. But when you put your unique planets in each house, it colors it uniquely and differently. And I would love to let you know what your unique natal chart has for you. I do uh, natal chart readings, birth chart readings, love and career destiny readings just let me know just hit my links below or email me and i would love to relay the messages of the stars for you um y'all have a great day and i'll see you on the next one my beautiful pisces risings y'all have a good one all right bye